there, and welcome back to Comic Tropes, unless it's your first time, in which case, hi, I'm Chris. What's your name? Well, I can't hear you. It's a video. You should have known that. Listen, this video is coming out on the 1st of October. I want to have, for the whole month, a sort of Halloween theme. I love Halloween. So, all this month, I'm going to be looking at either horror or at least some sort of monster archetype in the comics that we look at. And the one I have today is a doozy. I mean, how do you have a comic book that lasts for 10 years, is written by a name creator, like a famous name creator, and yet nobody knows who you're talking about? Well, we're going to examine exactly that, because in 1940, Sergeant Spook was created by Novelty Press. And we're going to take a look at Blue Bolt Comics, Volume 2, Issue Number 10. It was an anthology comic starring, among others, Sergeant Spook. Sergeant Spook is the hero of these stories. He's a ghost. He's not a superhero or anything. He's just a ghost. That means he has abilities like he's completely invisible to everybody. Uh, he can only be heard by psychics. Usually he can't be heard. He can walk through walls, but he can punch, hit, grab people. He's a ghost. There's nothing more to it than that. He came out about four months after the Spectre was introduced in uh, DC Comics back in 1940. So, uh, I don't think he was necessarily a ripoff or a derivative. I, it's just too close, that four months. I think it's a coincidence. Plus, the Spectre, even though he's a ghost, he has other powers. Sergeant Spook, he's just kind of a boring ghost and a bit of an idiot. You know what, without any further ado, let's launch into this issue. The story kicks off showing Sergeant Spook punching an old man into a little kiddie pool. That's a scene that we'll see later in the story. That's its big moment. The reason Sergeant Spook is seen in a policeman's uniform is that he died on duty. Now, I won't say that he died in the line of duty. A lot of times if you have a ghost story, that person comes back as a ghost because they were murdered by somebody, right? And they want to solve uh, who killed them, or, or something like that. They have unfinished business. Well, not this guy. In his origin, Sergeant Spook was just on duty. He goes to examine a bunch of evidence in the crime lab, and he's smoking a pipe. He gets so preoccupied with his work that he sets his lit pipe next to some chemicals, and he blows himself up. He killed himself! The story proper begins in the next panel, and a caption says, A downtown slum with a gutter for a playground. I gotta say, as far as slums go, this one isn't too bad. It's just a bunch of white kids playing baseball next to crates of fresh fruit. If that counts as a slum, sign me up. One of the kids is about to get run over by a car, but Sergeant Spook happens to be there, and he yanks the kid out of the way. Sergeant Spook says, when you play in the streets, Sonny, keep one eye on the ball and the other one on traffic. Huh? Am I hearing things? Even though this is volume two, issue number 10, Sergeant Spook has been around for a while, this is the first person that's been able to actually hear Sergeant Spook. Up until now, he's just talking to himself, kind of like Garfield the cat. Nobody really responds to him. The driver of the car steps out, and it's the mayor of the city. He basically just steps out to insult the kids for playing in the middle of the road. He calls them ragamuffins. And then when the main kid stands up to him, saying, Where else can we play if you don't give us playgrounds? The mayor calls him an impertinent young whelp. The old-timey insults in these issues of Sergeant Spook are absolutely my favorite part of these stories. I wish it was full of even more of them. Ah, that mayor, he's all hat and no cattle, I tell you. A real dunderhead, a glumpus, a duke of limbs, if you will. The mayor loses his temper with the kids, shouting, I'll teach you to get fresh with the mayor of this great city. Put up your dukes. But then Sergeant Spook jumps in, punching the mayor on the head and kicking him in the butthole. The mayor gone, Spook grabs Jerry's arm. Where are you going, Jerry? Don't ask me, I'm being dragged. Sergeant Spook drags Jerry into some sort of abandoned building and says, I wanted some privacy. <laughs> uh, why did you need some privacy there, Sergeant Spook? It's no gag, Jerry. You see, I'm a ghost. I don't see nothing. Come on, spill it. Is there a hidden microphone like the G-Men use in the movies? Basically, Jerry refuses to believe in ghosts, and why would he? So Sergeant Spook picks Jerry up and begins spanking him, saying, You'll have to admit, a hidden microphone couldn't do this. Yow! Stop! 
Looks like Sergeant Spook has accomplished three things so far. He's killed himself, he's attacked the elected mayor, and he's dragged away a small child to spank him. Your hero, ladies and gentlemen. Sergeant Spook explains that Jerry is psychic, and that must be why he can hear him. Then he explains that he has a plan to help Jerry and his friends. He says, Maybe I can help you kids get a playground. Listen. The plan is pretty straightforward. Jerry and his friends simply go around with a petition and get signatures from the people of the city. The kids get signatures from apparently a bum, a housewife, and maybe some sort of Texan oil tycoon. Jerry knocks on the door of a random gentleman who does not like it, and he says, A petition, huh? What are you trying to do? Knock our mayor? That is a weird assumption to jump to. Hi, I'm a little kid. I'm trying to get signatures for a playground. What are you trying to do? Knock our mayor? The angry citizen gets so angry that he punches Jerry in the face and says, Get out and stay out, you gutter snipe. He can call that kid a gutter snipe because he's a real gentleman of four outs, if you catch my drift. A grumple Tonian, if I ever saw one. Having beaten a child that he doesn't know, the man thinks to himself, Anything the mayor's against, I'm against. And that goes for this petition. I'm gonna rip it up. Sergeant Spook happens to be there, so he punches the man in the face. Sergeant Spook's primary way of solving problems, possibly his only way of solving problems, is punching people in the face that can't see him coming. From there, we cut to a city council meeting where Jerry and his friends rush in saying, Hey, Mayor, we got a petition with 500 signatures demanding a playground. The mayor starts to say, How dare you interrupt this meeting? But Sergeant Spook comes from behind and silences the mayor by smothering him. An opponent of the mayor named Harris steps up and calls for a vote on whether they should make the playground. The decision is split, so the mayor has to make the deciding vote. Sergeant Spook keeps the mayor's mouth gagged and forcibly nods it yes. And really, that's how you change minds, by having a ghost physically manhandle you. The mayor is cartoonishly evil. Even though he's now obligated to build a playground, he calls up a contractor and says, I want to build the playground, see? Put a lot of sand in the cement. Use cheap materials, and we'll soak the city to the hilt. We can whack up the graft later. Who voted for this guy? We jump forward in time to the grand opening of the newly built playground that the mayor is announcing. But before any of the kids can even play in it, Sergeant Spook yanks the mayor himself in and says, This isn't election day, Jerry. Keep everyone out. You'll understand later. Sergeant Spook got what he needed out of those kids. He got them to sign the petition, so now he's done with them, and he's going to have some fun torturing the mayor. He forces the mayor to go on the slide, which instantly breaks, and he falls down. Then Sergeant Spook puts him on a swing and hurls it with all of his might. It snaps, and the mayor falls down. The mayor is disheveled and, and injured. Now that Sergeant Spook is done with the fun part of beating on an old man, he calls on Jerry to wrap things up, saying, Make him talk, Jerry. Spill the truth, Mayor. What's wrong with the playground? If you don't answer, you'll get worse. I'll, I'll talk. We used cheaper material than the plans called for and pocketed the profits. How did the mayor expect this to work? These kids were all going to get injured, have lawsuits against the city. What was he thinking? The mayor's opponent calms the crowd down, saying, Calm down, folks. We'll build a real playground as soon as the mayor is put behind bars. And Sergeant Spook walks the mayor away, saying, Just a little ride for the mayor. The last stop is jail. It looks like we're going to miss the most interesting part, seeing an invisible ghost that no one can hear try to arraign the mayor. I'd love to see that part. See, see the mayor just get shoved into the police station, no one knows how to book him or what crime or anything. He's being dragged away by Sergeant Spook. Sergeant Spook is a bit of an idiot. So this title lasted for over 10 years. Sergeant Spook was in almost all the issues of Blue Bolt Comics. Uh, from issue 1 to something like issue 95, I think he was in every issue. And then he was in a couple others after that. So that lasted about 10 years. And it was written by a famous writer... Mickey Spillane. If you're not aware who Mickey Spillane is, he later became famous for writing uh, hard-boiled uh, detective stories. He created the character Mike Hammer, who was kind of a brutal uh, private eye. He would just punch people in the face left and right. And that also seems to be how Sergeant Spook tries to solve most of his problems, just punching people in the face and getting them to talk. 
Uh, but yeah, it was written by Mickey Spillane, who got his start in comics. Uh, Mickey Spillane's crime novels absolutely must have influenced Frank Miller. There, there's no question in my mind that stuff like Sin City is definitely based on Mike Hammer and stories like that. So anyway, he must have grown up, Frank Miller must have grown up reading stories like Sergeant Spook. It's a pretty crazy uh, take on a ghost character. He's not very interesting, is he? He can't interact with that many people. Eventually they created this world called Ghost Town, populated with all sorts of famous ghosts. It could be everybody from Paul Bunyan to Napoleon, and he could interact with those people in Ghost Town. So anyway, it was fun, it was crazy. I don't think anybody remembers who he is, but it's a ghost. That counts for October's theme, and next week I'll be back I believe it's going to be, let's see, October 8th. Okay, I have an idea for that. After that, we've got a Friday the 13th coming up. I'm going to do something for Friday the 13th. Count on that. There's a few other horror comics that I want to hit. I hope you stay with me. Uh, if you haven't, check out my Patreon. It's in the link in the description. I appreciate your audience ship. And until next week, keep reading comics.